Hi everyone, welcome to church. I'm Katie Yons and I'm the pastor at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please check out our announcements and if you're watching live, connect with others in the chat or the comments. You can also check out stpetersverona.org to connect with us and we would love to hear from you. And now I invite you to gather your hearts and your minds for worship. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Katie Jans from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Verona, New York. This worship service is for Palm and Passion Sunday, March 28, 2021. Now on this day in the church calendar, we remember how Jesus made his triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem at the beginning of that fateful week, the week that would end with him on a cross. We'll get to that more later in this service. But a few things before we get started today. First of all, something fun. I would like to give a quick shout out to Doris Althaus and all of her neighbors in assisted living in Toms River, New Jersey. Doris and her neighbors get together and watch this for their weekly worship time. So, hey Doris, hey everybody in Toms River. Doris, we miss you and we're just so glad that you and your neighbors can worship with us in this way. Next, if you have not sent in your piece of the, please do that soon. I just have got a few more. So we got a few more contributions and they are, they are flowing in, but we still need yours. We still need a lot of them that are out there. So if you haven't done that already, please don't delay. Don't wait until the last minute. We need your piece of this word, this word that we don't say or sing during Lent, so that we can put it all together and create it, um, put it all together for, um, for Easter next week. All right, now this worship service will include communion. So we are extending the table from our 10 a.m. drive-in service at St. Peter's all the way to your home. So feel free to pause this video and get your bread and wine ready for later in the service. Remember, you can use any kind of bread or cracker and any kind of wine or juice. 
we're not the communion cops here. So whatever you think is appropriate and respectful. And finally, this is only the beginning of Holy Week, and I do hope that you'll join us for the other worship services that we are offering this week. On Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll have online worship services posted that you can access whenever you have the time for worship. We are doing a drive-in Tenebrae service for Good Friday at 7 p.m. in our parking lot, and a drive-in Easter service next Sunday at 10 a.m. In, also in our parking lot, as well as an online service for Easter that premieres at 9 a.m. just like this one. Now, no matter how you observe Holy Week, I hope it is an experience that grounds you, grounds you in the love and joy of Christ that is stronger than death. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for worship today, and thank you for being the church no matter where you are. For Palm Sunday, we begin with our Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our gathering hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let's sing along with Scott.
Thank you, Scott, and thank you to everyone who sent in pictures for our Palm Parade. And now, let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, Violet Weiss will bring us our reading for today. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and, and being found, found in a human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Violet. And now it is time for the children's message. So, hello kids. I hope you're out there. I hope you're watching and I hope you're doing well and staying safe. You may have noticed that I'm in kind of an unusual spot for this children's message. Um, I am recording this in the rear view mirror of my car. So if it's a little dirty, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Now, we'll get into more in a little bit about why I'm doing this, but when you get old enough to drive a car, you will see just how important the rear view mirror is. It's very important. When I was in driver's ed, I remember having a teacher tell me that it was actually um, I should be looking in the rearview mirror almost as much as I was looking forward, which seems weird, right? Because most of the time in a car, you're not going backwards, you're going forwards. So you should really be looking forwards, right? Well, I learned quickly that it was just when you're driving a car, it's just good to be aware of everything that is around you. And that's true in life, too. As you move through life, it's just good to be aware of what's going on. Now, why am I talking to you here? Well, because there's one very important line in our gospel reading that kind of gets overlooked. Our gospel story today is this exciting story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people waved their palm branches and shouted and sang Hosanna, which means save us. They were so excited to see Jesus. But the one line at the end that we can't forget is where it says that at first the disciples didn't understand what was going on. But later, after Jesus rose from the dead, they remembered and they understood. Well, that happens a lot, actually. It happens a lot that we don't understand things until afterward, sometimes a long time after they happen. It takes us time to really think about something and figure it out. And uh, it's kind of like looking at something in the rearview mirror. It's behind you. You might think, oh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But it's still good to be aware of what is behind you. And sometimes we need to look back on what happened in order to really understand it and learn something for the future. You know, in some ways, in a lot of ways, actually, we are pretty lucky because we already know these stories. A lot of us have heard this story before and we tell it every year. And we know these stories about Jesus kind of backwards and forwards. But the disciples, those poor disciples, they did not know what was going to happen. They, it was all new to them. And they were just sort of caught up in the middle of the whole thing. And it took them years 
of thinking about it and praying about it and talking about it to really figure out what had happened. You know, Jesus he comes into the city on a donkey and the, the crowd is cheering and shouting for him. But the reason they're doing that is because they all thought he was a different kind of king. They all thought he was a king who was going to lead them into battle and help them win over the Romans. But instead, he was a king who would die on a cross. Now, for someone who'd never heard of Jesus, if you'd never heard that before, it would not make a lot of sense. So it's no wonder that the disciples really had to think about it. It was like a really hard puzzle. They had to figure out why, if this happened, then why did Jesus die? Why, what happened later in the week? But because they looked back on these things and thought about them and worked hard to understand them, that means that they could hand it down to us. So now we understand a little bit better what was happening. We can talk about Jesus being a king of peace, a king of nonviolence, a king of love. So the next time something happens that you don't understand, it is okay to stop and take your time and think about it and ask God for help understanding it. Sometimes it just takes time to understand. And that is that has to do with everything, not just church stuff, not just God stuff. Sometimes just life takes a while to understand, and that is okay. Okay, let us pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, there are so many things we don't understand. Help us to keep thinking about them. Help us to understand in time. Help us to see what you are doing. Amen. Okay, we continue now with our hymn of the day. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Let's sing along with Scott.
Thank you, Scott. And now let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A good friend of mine is a budding ukulele star on YouTube, and they do a live stream concert every month. It's kind of like a, a virtual open mic. And one of the songs at the virtual open mic this month was a mashup of Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy and What's Up by the Four Non Blondes. Now, if you don't know what a mashup is, that's okay. Mashup just means you take two songs and you kind of weave them together to make a new thing. And I'm guessing of these two songs, I'm guessing that a lot of you remember the first song, the Don't Worry, Be Happy. Um, that's a song that came out in the late 80s. It was very popular. It got a lot of radio play. Other people have covered it. And it's, you know, it's got a catchy little tune to it and a little pick-me-up kind of message, right? Don't worry, be happy. The second song was also on the radio a fair amount, more uh, maybe a few years afterwards, or early 90s. But it wasn't quite as mainstream. And it's, uh, its message is a little less happy. Certainly a little less happy-go-lucky. Um, it's a little more angst-filled. <laughs> and you might recognize it if I, sh if I sing the chorus for you. It goes, hey, yay, yay, hey, yay, yay, I said, hey, what's going on? And I won't sing the whole thing for you, but some of the words go like this. And so I cry sometimes when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out, what's in my head. And I scream from the top of my lungs, what's going on? These two songs are pretty much complete opposites in terms of message, right? But musically, it's a little eerie. It's almost like they are part of the same song. They have the same chords, they have a very similar melody, they have the same tempo, similar structure. They just seem to go together. Here, I'll, I'll sing you a little snippet of each one mashed up, put, you know, put together like that. 25 years and my life is still trying to get up that great big hill of hope for a destination. In every life you have some trouble. When you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Be happy. You get what I'm saying. I guess both songs are about how to process the crummy parts of life. Right? Bobby McFerrin would tell you, hey, man, don't worry. Just chill and let your troubles go. And the four non-blondes would say, yeah, go outside and scream, right? Vent, get it all out. My friend first put them together as a mashup about five years ago. And other people before that also had noticed just how similar these two songs are. But I gotta say, when I heard those songs together as one mashup, one entity, a few days ago, I realized, I thought, wow, it seems like this was done specifically for right now, for the times that we find ourselves in. A lot of us are somewhere between there's light at the end of the tunnel on one hand, and I don't know how much more of this I can take on the other hand. We have you know, flashes of optimism where we dare to hope about what life might look like in, in a few months or in six months or in a year or whatever, right? What it might look like post-pandemic. And then we also have flashes of caution and concern and fear even sometimes, right? When we remember that it's not quite safe yet, we can't quite let loose. And we remember all of the loss and all of the pain that, that we've experienced this past year. And often we didn't have room or space or mental time, mental space, right, to process that loss. So I think we're all in a different place 
on that continuum between those, those two things, but I think to some degree we're all feeling a mixture of those two. And it could be, you know, all one way or all the other way, but it's still, I think, both are present for a lot of us. I know they are for me. Debbie Thomas says it like this. On the one hand, the light at the end of the tunnel revives and renews us. On the other hand, it shows us just how bleak and dismal the tunnel has been. In other words, she says, it doesn't take us human beings long to go from praise to pain. It doesn't take us long to go from the heights to the depths and back again. Such is human nature. And Palm Sunday, which is also Passion Sunday, is a day that shows us that reality very, very clearly. In the space of a week, actually less than a week, the people go from shouting Hosanna and waving palm branches and welcoming Jesus into the holy city Jerusalem to shouting crucify him and demanding that he be put to death. Today, my friends, today is a day of paradox. A day when we remember the highs and the lows of the human experience and the complexity of who we are. A day when we come face to face with the sobering reality that public opinion can turn on a dime. And a time when we can feel the frightening power of a crowd. I know it might be hard to, re to think about that, to, to remember what it feels like to be part of a crowd, but we do behave differently when we're in a crowd of people. Being part of a group together has such power to bring us to say and do things that we might not normally do and say, for better or for worse. Palm and Passion Sunday is a day that remembers the totality of who we are as human beings. That we are complicated creatures and it illustrates the dissonance that is at the heart of our faith. Jesus comes on a donkey, not on a stallion, not in a chariot. In modern terms, Jesus doesn't glide into town in a sleek SUV with tinted windows and a whole entourage, right? If anything, he finds his way into town on, in an old rusty pinto that maybe backfires every so often. Jesus doesn't look like a king, doesn't dress like a king, doesn't act like a king, and he saves us, not in the way a king would, but in the way God does. A paradoxical king for a paradoxical people. A strange people whose opinions change like the wind. But even though Jesus knew this, he got on that donkey anyway. He knew what was coming, and yet he knew that this was his path in life, to love a fickle and mercurial race such as ourselves, to love them, to love us, even though it meant they would turn on him. We would turn on him. Jesus poured out everything he was in order to be filled with God's love for the human race and for the world and for all creation. That love encompasses our highs and our lows. This faith encompasses our hopes and our despairs, our promises and our broken places. My friends, we have a hard but holy week ahead of us. A week that transports us into the reality of our existence and the reality of the one who came into our existence, lived our existence, in order that he might save us from that existence being meaningless. Christ came not only to be the light at the end of the tunnel, 
not just to say, don't worry, be happy, but to walk with us through the tunnel. Even when we stumble, even when we cry out for mercy and say, I can't go on. This week, let us walk with him. The way is hard, but it is holy. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue now with the prayers led by Kathy Hollywood. Good morning. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know you, your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Speed vaccination efforts. Help our southern border situation to be handled with wisdom and compassion. Be with the grieving families in Atlanta, Georgia, and in Boulder, Colorado. Grant respite and renewal to all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at the time of death those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. When Jesus walked this earth, he healed many. Today we ask for healing for Robin, Henry, Margarita, Mary, Stephanie, Emma, Shirley, Amy, Bonnie, Paul, and Bob. Give peace and comfort to Renee and Maureen. Grant successful surgery for Sherry. Stand alongside those battling cancer. Pat, Marlon, Abe, Steve, Don, Sharon, Joe, Gary, Renee, Kensley, Anne-Marie, Bonnie, Abby, Chris, Mary, and Lisa. Come to the aid of all those affected by COVID-19 including Isaiah, Kelly, and James' classmate, Pastor Ejaz, Jackie, Wes, and the Cardinal family. Keep safe all our first responders and law enforcement, including Brent, John, Eddie, Kevin, Jenna, and Steve. Provide guidance for Christopher, Andrea, and Craig, Carl, and Evan. Bring comfort to all who would rather be at home but must live elsewhere for safety's sake. Phil, Ralph, Wes, Sarah, Max, and Doris. Grant peace to all who suffer from mental illnesses which are magnified by the pandemic. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. 
Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. And now we move to the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you now to share the peace in the chat window or the comments. Share peace with those who are right there in your home. Share peace by sending a text or an email to someone or even post on social media a word of Christ's peace. Peace be to everyone commenting on YouTube and Facebook, and peace be with all of you today. Okay, everyone, it is time for communion. So this is when you'll want to bring out your bread or cracker and your wine or juice, and you are invited to eat and drink along with me after our prayer. In this simple meal of bread and wine, our Lord Jesus gives us his very self, his body and his blood. We don't need to worry ourselves with providing food and drink fancy enough for this meal. Jesus comes to us through whatever we have as a sign that he has made everything holy through his life, his death, and his resurrection. And he comes to us wherever we are as a reminder that all things are united and made whole in him and that we are joined together as his body despite our physical distance. When we come to this table, this table that is not ours but God's, we eat with those who have come before and those who will come after us, those right here and those everywhere, those joining us online and those joining us in our parking lot this morning. And we remember and proclaim that on the night before the cross, the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. body of Christ given for you. If there's a group of you there, I invite you to say that to each other as you pass the bread. The body of Christ given for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. Again, if there's a group, I invite you to say that to each other as you pass the cups. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now remember, if you have leftovers after worship, you can go ahead and eat and drink whatever is left. If you can't do that, maybe break the bread into crumbs for the birds or use the wine or the juice to water a tree. Return it to the earth from which it came instead of putting it in the garbage or putting it down the drain. These are generally the most respectful way to handle these things. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, today we have walked with you and waved palm branches triumphantly for you as you entered the city. Today we have eaten with you and remembered as you shared the Last Supper with your disciples. Lord, prepare us for what is to come. The washing of feet, the garden of prayer, your arrest, your sham of a trial, the shouts of the crowd, the decree of Pontius Pilate, the whip, the crown of thorns, the cross, the nails, your last breath, and your tomb. By ourselves, we are not strong enough to walk this road with you. And like Peter and the disciples, we all fall away. By your grace, empower us to wait and watch and witness to the marvelous miracle that unfolds this week. When all seems hopeless, keep us by your side. Bring us to the empty tomb and let us be born with you to new life. Amen. And now may God bless us this holy week as we journey with Jesus through the sorrow of his death and into the joy of the resurrection. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our sending hymn today will be Lamb of God. Let's sing with Scott. Oh, 
Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us for worship today. We are so glad that you did. We care about you, so please be well and stay safe. Do the things that we need to do, masks, hand washing, get your shot when it's your turn, all those things that will help us beat this virus together. Thank you to everyone who helped to lead this worship service today. Thank you to Violet Bice, Kathy Haldenwang, Scott Stewart, and Russ Brookins. And now, if you were spiritually fed by this worship service, then please consider doing two things. First of all, you can respond to God's gift with a gift of your own. If you already have a church home that you support, I invite you to make a donation there. And if you don't, and you'd like to be part of what we are doing at St. Peter's, that is great. Just go to our website, stpetersverona.org. At the top, click on Giving and then on the yellow button that says Donate via PayPal. Of course, there's always the mail as well, and our mailing address is also on that page. Thank you, and thank you to all of our members and friends who have continued to contribute to our life together over the past year, whether that's financially or whether that's in some other way, we are just so glad that you are part of our church family. The second thing that you can do is you can connect with us. Again, at stpetersverona.org, under I'm New Here, click on Stay Connected to sign up for our various communications with the checkboxes. That way, you won't miss anything that we're up to. On Facebook, you can follow us and like us. For the latest updates, our live posts, Wednesday night prayer services, and our daily prayers, please make sure to visit our Facebook page directly. On YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel and then click the bell that pops up right away to get notifications whenever we post something new. And on both platforms, you can like this video by giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment to let us know that you were here. And now, go in peace. Walk with Jesus. Thanks be to God. <laughs>